Hello and welcome to the podcast for Real Life Heroines with Susanna Liller. Join us bi-weekly as alongside of you, we work toward answering the call, knowing that stepping into our destiny always involves going into the unknown and exploring new landscapes. This show talks about those new landscapes, what it took to get there, and the real challenges that take place for most of us along the journey. Heroines don't stay in their comfort zone. They follow their inner guidance to grow and evolve. From the School for Real Life Heroines, your host, Susanna Liller. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast for Real Life Heroines, where I get to talk to women who have made that leap, who have left the known, their comfort zone, and crossed over the threshold into the unknown. And my big interest is, how did that go for you? And what was that like? And why did you do it? And all those questions. And today I get to ask those questions one way or the other with Karen De Silva. Karen, welcome. Thank you, Susanna. It's really a pleasure to be here. It's lovely to have you here. And let me say a few words about you, if I might. Um, sure. Thank you for providing me with your bio. You have over 25 years of experience helping artists and brands enhance their reach and engagement. This work has led Karen to founding Karen De Silva Creative Services which focuses on helping photographers, artists, agencies, and small businesses produce and create relevant marketing campaigns around their content. Throughout Karen's career, she ran the creative department for Phototonica's North American region. She directed and edited art for Getty Images in New York and helped lead Image Bank's creative department. Karen's work now focuses on helping photographers and other artists expand their businesses through digital marketing, social, and branded strategy. Karen has always been an artist herself. As a clay artist, she started Serving Oysters, an oyster plate company born out of her creative side and was launched with her marketing side how helpful to have both those sides. Karen has always strived for balance in her life, making art and showing artists and small businesses how to make their dream businesses successful is her goal. And it's not always easy, is it, Karen? No, it's not, but, <laughs> but it's worthwhile. <laughs> Very worthwhile. And that, again, balance of being the marketer and being the artist there's so many artists that would die to have a half marketing part to them, but yeah, but you do, which I know. Um, let me share, if I might, that um, what's particularly fun for me with this interview is that all of you who've been following me and watching these podcasts, listening, um, know that I started a school for real life heroines. And Karen is soon to be, I mean, she really is after tonight, a graduate of that school and knows, knows the heroine's journey backwards and forwards. Wouldn't you say, Karen? I do. I do. I, um, I feel like I've been on that journey for longer than even when I, I finally discovered it. Right. Right. So we should, let's talk about that. And, and you can all imagine that having Karen as a student in the course has really helped me see how people are perceiving the course and the heroine's journey as a teaching mechanism. So I thank you for all that help, Karen De Silva. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> but let's just talk about, so one of the things you said to me that was very helpful. And I knew this, but you really brought it to the fore was that the journey is really about identity. And, and can you just say what prompted that? How is it a journey of identity in your mind? 
Well, for me, um, I, isn't that what we're always trying to figure out? Like who we are, what we're supposed to do, like how do we make sense of life? You know, and it it was really the journey, the the course itself that helped me realize that if you can really identify who you are and what you're passionate about, that that passion feels like meaning. It is meaning in your life. And then when you're on the path and you're um, putting yourself out there and you're connecting with others, it, um, it feels like a purpose for you. And so that, that's really, you know, in, there, there are so many great things about the journey, but I would say that that sort of sums up where I am today. I feel like I feel more comfortable with who I am and I feel like my life has meaning and that meaning is driven by purpose. Wow, what wonderfully said. And how many, we've talked about this before in the course and, and how many people have a different understanding of what they're supposed to do. Usually it's their parents. I remember my mother saying, no, you can't be an archeologist. You have to be a teacher. Um, I think you had a similar experience. You wanted to perhaps pursue a more artistic route early on and wasn't the same for you. Isn't with that funny? I mean, we, um, we're we told what we should be or what we shouldn't be. Our brain tells us what we should be, what we shouldn't be. We leap into things that we think we want to be. And each one of those experiences is really a stepping stone into our identity, right? Like the things that we, like, don't we learn more about who we are by the things that don't come natural or, right. you know, the things that we see other people do and wish we could do and learn from like what they're doing. Right. Though I would say often you see that and then you think, oh, I could never do that. I mean, she's doing it, but I can't do it. And so I know this about you and maybe you would talk about your, you know, lack of fear in leaping and leaving the, your, you know, what you know and going into the unknown. I think that you've described yourself as a pirate in that way. Yeah, we kind of, it's funny. We, I, I don't know where it came from, but, um, my husband always jokes with me that I'm part pirate, but I think that it was just that my my family history is just one big leap after another. I mean, you know, we we moved from England where I was born to Canada when I was five. You know, it my dad's job took us to to Texas when I was 15. You know, they went further to Paris when I was just graduating from college, and then I jumped into New York. And, and oftentimes, you know, I, I meet people and, and they say like, oh, how could you be so brave? Like, how are you so brave to do that? But it's never the leaping that is the problem for us. It's, it's just, you know, the, the landing and, and how to, you know, um, figure out your circumstances and your surroundings and, uh, and just kind of bust, dust yourself off and, and jump up and start walking again. Right. And it's it's making that transition and you're in a new environment and you've got to get settled and adjusted. I think also, wouldn't you say it's also the anticipation of it that scares. I mean, I have had so many coaching clients who are scared to death on this side of the leap before they do it. And then they do it and it's not quite as bad as they thought. Yeah, I think you're right. There's probably two people one person that the people that like have the anticipation before the leap and then the other half are excited about the leap and then as they're starting to touch the ground the anticipation like jumps in <laughs> so luckily for me i uh i always see it as exciting you know but then it's it's a crazy you know uh you know moment of reorientating yourself but but as but you it, say, uh, luckily, right? <laughs> yeah, and you've really gained from it because when you do leap and try something new, you're learning all the time what works for you and what doesn't. And we're going to get to kind of where this has led you. But I, I wanted to um, go to the 
So part of the course is about helping women see their lives from a different perspective. And when you do that, you get epiphanies. And you said that there's definitely some epiphanies that you've gained. And would you want to share that with people? Yeah, yeah. And I, and I would say just to back up a bit, but like um, I can say in hindsight now that the course, especially the comfort zone challenge, which we'll probably talk about in a little bit, um, you know, not only has it been about like who who I am, but how I can really get to the life that I want to live, right? And in order to do that, you have to really understand like where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are, what it is that you really want, you know, and and have the courage to follow that. And so, in in getting there, I I did I think over this last year, you know, especially with the accountability group, having two other students. And, you know, the three of us going through the lessons and really talking about what this means to us, but in in the scope of their own life, you know, so the, the three epiphanies would be that I always thought that like, um, like a DIY book or like ha a self help, you know, DIY book was about for people that like, um, were missing something or needed to fix something. And, you know, it. I feel funny even saying this because it's just been years of of me thinking that. But you know, I I go out of my way to um, to live a healthy life. You know, to eat healthy. You know, I have things that I do like walk or go to the gym or you know eat more vegetables, sleep better. Like, why wouldn't I work on myself as well? And so that I've really embraced that. I've really embraced like all the great knowledge out there of just how to. Um, manage you know yourself in situations or how to have hind, uh, have some uh, insight as to the kind of situation you're walking into you know and and what kind of armor people have or what is their gut reaction and how what they're doing might, might not be coming from you know the the situation but the fear or the baggage or the background they have so that would be the first one the second one is that um I feel I've always put a lot of pressure on, um, you know, myself to be on a schedule to get things done at the right time to to keep going because if I don't get to that goal, it's I'm failing and failing even meant like taking a pause, walking away, stopping something. And I I came to the realization, you know, through some of these books, through the course, that like it's not a pause; it's a moment of gestation. Like things don't stop inside you. They, they keep growing. They keep developing, right. That, um, that you haven't stopped painting. You're thinking about it. You're getting inspired. You know, the minute you pick the brush up again, you're, you're taking all that extra and you're putting into that next work. Um, you know, so, so I'm, I'm being patient, you know, a little more patient. I've learned patience and, uh, and I, really try to think of it as as not um a grinding halt anymore it's just a different way of growing developing and then the last thing which is kind of a big deal i um i wouldn't necessarily call myself too spiritual but i feel like there's a there's something you can believe in that is like the universe you know the powers of the universe the powers to um like visualize something, the power to, to not just ask or pray, but to take like, this is the, this is the truth that I want. This is the future I want. And it's allowed me to sort of also let go of that pressure that I was putting on myself to be the only one that was driving this, mm -hmm. you know? So between the three of things, I feel a little lighter about like the journey. And I'm, I've always been really good at seeing a problem or a crisis or, you know, something that doesn't feel like it's going my way as an opportunity into something else that I might not see. But now that I sort of feel like I'm not, I'm not on this path on, by myself, that, that there are, are ways to sort of envision um, a future that, um, that it, it feels, it feels better. It feels like um, more possible. I think that you know, having worked with you for over a year as you've been taking this course and 
and I just want to say, so Karen started it on her own, and then I introduced the accountability group so you could go through it with other people. And so in, in effect, you went back to the beginning again and, and did it start it again. So you do know it so well. But I remember at the beginning, you would say to me, you know, Susanna, there's definitely a spiritual tone to this. And which I always say, you know, take what works for you and leave the rest. Just it's, I just kind of put it all out there. And you you would say, you know, I'm not, it's really not me. And it's, I think it's so interesting that you've gathered some of that as you've gone along the way. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, in, in a way, when you think of, like, I'm a firm believer of collective consciousness, right? Like when that people from different sides of the world can be thinking about the same thing at the same time and that they're reacting to things, why wouldn't there be a power there that, you know, um, you know, a stream of energy in nature, in the universe, you know, that, that if you can get onto and be positive and, and have your targets and your goals, that, that anything is possible. So I think it would be great if you could talk to people, you know, usually I say, share a heroine's journey story. Tell us when, you know, how things were in ordinary life and then you got a call and what was that call and how was the leap responding to that call? And you you had mentioned before the comfort zone challenge that you participated in where I invite people in seven weeks time, try out doing something that's out of your comfort zone and you did. So, and it really kind of, worked for you. So do you want to share with us what that was about? Yeah, I, I would love to actually. Um, so, so yeah, the comfort zone challenge, the first time I did it, um, it's, uh, if, if you don't know, you, you can go on the Susanna's site and, um, and join a comfort zone challenge there. They, there are several through the year. Um, and you, what you agree to, you know, it doesn't cost anything is that you just get emails for the next seven weeks and you commit to trying to get uncomfortable. And so the first couple, um, challenge, the first couple emails were about little things, you know, like, uh, maybe you, um, you know, you walk to work or you don't take the elevator, you take the stairs or you wear a different color of lipstick or you get up an hour early and you, uh, do some writing. I mean, you know, just little things, right. Um, so I, I'm, I'm always, I've always got a list of things I should be doing, things I need to be doing. And I, I had sort of anticipated that one of those things would be my comfort zone challenge. I mean, they're, they aren't, they aren't getting done because it makes me uncomfortable to have to do them more, you know? Um, but, um, about three weeks in it, I remembered that I, um, when we first moved to Maine, which is now eight years ago, we um we used to really embrace the culture you know go to the beach buy the lobsters eat the oysters and um i never had a good place like a something a plate to put the oysters on and so i started doing research you know this is back in eight years ago like what can i buy when people come over that i can display our wonderful oysters as just me i like all the home decor and stuff and um, after a while, I started designing one and I was thinking, how would I do it? Would I do it in clay? And I even remember buying some clay and I remember doing some YouTube tutorials, trying to figure out how to make this like giant big, uh, like form. And then it just kind of went away. Like it, you know, you get busy. Kids life, are in school. Life takes school. over. Regular yeah, life yeah. gets in the way. Yeah. And, you know, we were doing big things like saving for a house and, you know, finding a community in our new home. Um, but anyway, it, it sort of woke up again, that, that call started, uh, in my head when we were doing the comfort zone challenge and, and I decided, okay, my comfort zone challenge is going to be to find a clay class, like to find a place where I can try to make the plate that I wanted. And, uh, Sorry, is that truck a little loud? No. I can't hear um, it, but let me just say, and that's the beauty of the comfort zone challenge is it can be 
just, all right, I'm going to find a class. It's not like a big, scary thing. Like I will have a bowl done by the seventh week, you know? So you said, I'm going to find a class. Yeah. And so l- luckily um, within minutes, I found an open clay class that was maybe 25 minutes away from my home. Um, it was every Saturday from nine to 11. You, uh, for $10, you just, just went in and you got a little bit of clay and you could throw on the wheel, you could build something. They would let you use your, their glazes. They would fire it for you. So I, you know, I went in and I started, I hadn't done clay since high school. And so I started rolling out the clay and then I started making Christmas ornaments. It was, it was in November anyway. And then I finally started making like the shape of a shell. And so, so yeah, so uh, that moment, like everything sort of came together and I made my very first prototype for the clay, I mean, my clay oyster plate, you know, the very first one um, born out of the comfort zone challenge, but been cooking for years, you know, as an idea. And so, so many times we try something in the comfort zone challenge and it's fun to try it. And like you did that and you could have put it on the shelf, but somehow it wasn't going to let you put it on the shelf. So what happened? You know, I, um, I mean, I went to art school. I was an art kid, you know, I, I, I actually leaned towards painting and then photography. I did a little sculpture, but clearly. Play really is like a raw energy, like a raw creativity for me. I, I mean, I remember being at like brownie camp, you know, as a probably six years old and um, finding a stream full of mud and spending the whole day making little bowls and just, you know, shaping things. Um, you know, so for me, like there was something about really the heart of who I am and what creativity is and just losing yourself for two hours mm. with this play um being in a room of women and a couple men and some kids that were all drawn to the same thing you know and seeing like this um this slab of like the earth you know like to create in to something that comes outside of comes from you right and goes into this like dirt really and then that you make you make something transform you're transforming it so tactile too yeah 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 it's uh it's amazing I mean the you know this the journey of the clay for me uh you know it I mean it it wasn't um instant right like I mean the the experience was like immediately so pleasurable but the work that it took to really get to where I am today. I mean, I probably have about four or five prototypes that, you know, learning about shrinkage, you know, <laughs> that the clay shrinks, you know, you can't make them too small or, you know, the, the shape, you know, at first it was going to be really minimal and then it became more um, in, inspired by the actual oyster shells, you know, and the texture. So what um, would you say your, how, and maybe it was just a, a nice unfolding of of this process, or was there a leap in there that you would say, "Wow, I had to make some kind of a decision to do something with this." Yeah, I think um, you know the nice thing. I mean, I'm you know I'm I achieve things. I I'm ambitious. You know, I've I've had wonderful like highs in my career and I pushed myself and I wanted to be successful like to a certain degree but there was something about the clay and this like um permission to just be uncomfortable and do something that you haven't done before um that just took a little pressure off like Mm -hmm. it it was um, not about strategizing and you know, having deadlines, it was just about just seeing where things go, you know, letting myself not get caught up with, um, you know, what the end looks like, which I, I, I do a lot, you know, like, I love that quote where it says at the start line, you 
can't really anticipate what the finish line looks like. And so it, it really was a great exercise in just uh, being a little freer about my creativity, having an idea of what I wanted, and then allowing myself to have the time to, um, to get to a place where I was happy. Wow. You were really giving to yourself. Yeah, I think so. And, and along the way, I, I, I can't even tell you how, like probably, I mean, if you were to ask people around me, how, how I changed allowing myself to have two hours a week of um, creative time, you know, and, and it wasn't even the two hours. It was the anticipation, like jumping out of bed early on a Saturday, listening to my favorite tunes, like all the way to the, to the clay class coming out of there feeling like you really accomplished something that you were just feeding yourself, you know, like you, you weren't, you know, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, you know, I, I, you know, support our family, you know, there's a, I have a lot of clients. I mean, there's a lot of give, you know, um, throughout the day. And it, it was really nice to sort of kind of fill yourself back up, you know, with wow. this moment. If you think about it, how would you have, I mean, what if you could have said, I think when you did that comfort zone challenge, it was right before the holidays and you could have said, no, sorry, I don't have time. This would be fun. I'll do it another time. What would you have missed out on if you hadn't followed that? Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, I, it's so hard to to say really, but for years, that's what I did. You know, you, you put everybody else in front of, and you put everybody else in front because like, you can't put your finger on what it is that you're doing. You know, like, I mean, it, it almost seems selfish to block out this time for yourself without like saying, I'm going to accomplish this, right? Like, it's just space, right? Like, and it, it's almost like, here you are being productive and then here you are doing, being done, completing something productive. Well, there's this space in between that doesn't really belong to like, um, you know, the goals that you have or, uh, you know, things that you said you were going to do or things that you needed to check off your list. It's just this like space. Right. And it, I think that's probably one of the hardest things for us to give ourselves this, this time to, um, to just explore, to, uh, to see what bubbles up, to, to follow something without knowing where it goes. And so I think this might be the time for you to tell us where, where is it now? Where has it taken you? Mm. Well, the marketing in me, uh, luckily, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, I, 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 um, I struggle a bit with like the, um, the idea of perfection versus the uh, just uh, like creating something at a really high level. And, uh, and I think that like um, being in the marketing business, I know what works, you know, I know when something doesn't feel like it's ready to be shown. I know how important um, a first impression is, right? So, and I, and uh, one of the greatest things to really understand when you're trying to sell something, you know, and, and when I say sell, I mean, share, share with like an audience that's, that really wants this, not just selling something that somebody could get interested in, in wanting, but didn't know they wanted it, right? Um, but like that, that skill is about building anticipation, right? It's about, um, I, I, when I, I talk about marketing I, and branding, I always say, like, think of that restaurant that you've heard about, that you know everybody is talking about, that you finally get to go, that while you're standing outside, you can see the warm light inside and, and the decor and the, the anticipation of going in there and enjoying like the best meal ever. And you, you walk in and the host is like, so uh, friendly and says exactly what you want to hear and takes you to a great table where there's great lighting 
They pass you a menu. It's beautifully designed. I mean, it all builds up to that moment where you put that first bite of food in your mouth. Like you've already decided you're going to love it before it even hits your lips, you know? And like, that is the best marketing ever. And so, so where I am today, I, um, I've done, um, a whole journey <laughs> of building form and getting to a place where I'm pretty be excited about what it feels like, what it, what it, um, like how form and function sort of come together. And then for anybody who's, who knows clay, then it's a whole other journey in glazing and really understanding what that needs to look like. And so I have gotten to a place where the, the intersection is exactly where I want to be. Um, I've found a great, uh, I've found great things about uh like how to package it like i've got you know if, if anybody has ever gotten a fancy pair of shoes or a bougie bag and they get the sort of cotton uh cinch sack um bag so i found some that i really like for the shells i found a stamp that i want to put on you know that sort of helps you understand what it is um I've, i even printed some great cards i've got my website ready um and I'm just just fine tuning some production line, um, you know, details. So you know, it's really important that I have like a clay that um, is durable, even though these are not plates you put in the dishwasher. Um, it's really important that I have like consistency, you know, where I can um, fire my clay at a certain level each, you know, be able to produce a certain amount a week. But I have some really exciting meetings set up um, where I, my goal is to, um, to be able to find a third party that will sell the clay plates and allow me to create the plates. But also, I mean, even go, going back to the bio Susanna wrote, I'm, I'm always kind of two things. I mean, I, I, I'm an artist, but I really enjoy the, the business side of marketing mm -hmm. and this 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 latest sort of um sort of um pivot for me has just made my marketing business that much stronger because i'm not just preaching to people about this method of how to market i'm i'm actually marketing side by side with them mm -hmm. and we're um you know it, i i I'm, I've all, even as a kid, I've, I've always been the one that sort of grabbed people's hands and brought them along with me. And so I, I sort of see this, uh, this path, like it's, it's about spinning many plates, you know, <laughs> not, no pun intended. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, so we learn on the heroine's journey that as you go through this adventure, that it takes you out of your comfort zone and you try, it's all new. And um, you get to the end after meeting threshold guardians and dragons that might get in the way, things that usually have to do with fear. But um, eventually you cross the return threshold and then the heroine goes back to her community and she shares what she's learned. And certainly you're doing that. I know that you gave a presentation to a group of artists and creators in um, Belfast a little while ago where you were sharing how you did it. So you really are, you, you have a really great example of the heroine's journey. And, um, and even just to, you know, help people with this, because I know that you encountered threshold guardians. So threshold guardians for people that don't know, on the journey, either before, as you're kind of thinking about it, or even anytime during the journey, they come, they're those internal thoughts, but sometimes external people that say, what do you think you're doing? Or you don't know about this? Or are you, you know, whatever. What did that, you were in a clay studio, just trying things out, learning, and what did someone say to you? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah I know right here I am on a podcast talking about this business and how I've gotten to market and and have a website and yet there are so many uh interesting little 
stories all the way along along these stepping stones you know and and not to say i mean we 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 hear a drowning voice in our head that you're not good enough or what what do you think you're doing or but there are moments where somebody actually says that to you and uh and sure enough you know we i was working and just so happy with where things were going you know after months of like building the the plate and and figuring out the glaze and um and somebody in my clay class said just blurted out your glazes aren't good enough you know it's like oh my goodness it felt like an arrow like through the back you know um you know and it it did it it um you know it 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 brought life to all my fears in my head you know that what am I what am I doing like I, I'm like imposter syndrome right like you know I don't belong here I I'm just faking this what what makes me think that I can just pick up clay in a matter of weeks and then create a product but but yeah you have to make sense of it right you kept going you didn't let it stop. yeah I I did keep going yeah. And uh, more importantly, I once you um, you know you have you have some core like short short list of people that you can share that with, and they can help you make sense of that comment. Mm -hmm. And um, you know what what basically happened was um, you know the clay that I originally started with was low fire clay, and it was low fire because the kilns were low fire, which meant the glaze was low fire, and it it does you know it does um, make the clay less stable you know moisture can get into it it can chip and so you know thankfully someone did say something like that to me because i've been able to just shift everything to high fire clay in fact i've even been making some porcelain um uh clay plates so it's you know though the shock of it you know can it's really hard. turn yeah. you into a tizzy it does hurt yeah and so heroines listening just be prepared because that will happen and expect it to happen because it does and you just check in with yourself check in with your support group and keep going like Karen did I, did, okay. I would also say you know uh, the nice thing the mo the the nicest thing about the support group the accountability group is that we've you have these three people that are in their own way on uh you know their own journey which might not even be close to what you're doing but the vulnerability of the group you know and being able to share things and then and then like uh getting a response that is even better than you would ever think that you could get with a, a core group of people gives you a bit more uh courage to be more vulnerable outside of that group and um you know do doing something like this I and mean, starting a business, starting a business based on like a, a, an art or a hobby, you know, I mean, that's a really difficult path, but it's so doable and so rewarding because it's so based in, like, like I said, in, in the, the passion, the meaning, the purpose of, of life, you know, and, but it does take lots of work, you know, and, and the more you can share that with people and be a little vulnerable, they, they just step in like and be a support system for you for the times when somebody says something that like bring to life one of your deepest darkest fears mm -hmm. right or when you're ready to go they're like tell me tell me where i can buy these or you know I, i've got a couple of friends that ever since i showed them my website have been forwarding me all sorts of stores around on the area you should try them they're going to sell it my my brother is in martha's vineyard he just got off the ferry and he's sending me pictures of oysters uh bowls saying like oh your stuff is way better than this but here's the name of this store you know like it's like it's it's really amazing that you've you know like when you are vulnerable when you sort of let your guard down when you allow people to be a part of the journey like what you're trying to do that they they want to see you succeed too they they're rooting for you to to make this happen so i know i'm not quite done with you because i have one more question to ask you um but i know people are thinking oh so how do i get a hold of this woman and where where is that website and so i'm going to share that 
but before I do, and of course it'll be in the show notes as well, but here's my question, which I always ask at the end. So we've heard so much helpful, interesting information from you, Karen, but to a busy woman out there who's taken it all in, if she could only remember one thing that you shared, what would you want her to remember? I would say that you can do everything, you know, that, that it really like the possibility is, is there it's, it's in you, you know, but there, there's a lot of work that it takes. Like it, it's hard work. It's um, it's time and patience, but you can, you can really make anything happen, but you, you have to put the work into it. Put the work in. Well, so I thank you so much for joining me today. And here's how people can reach you. Of course, this is not a surprise. Her website is servingoysters.com. And so you can email her at Karen at servingoysters.com. But then she has that marketing side, which I can attest to. It's a pretty fabulous side as well as the oyster plate side. Karen Silva, Karen D. Silva, creativeservices.com or Karen at creativeservices.com. Did I get all that right? It's Karen at Karen De Silva creativeservices.com. Uh-huh. It's a mouthful. <laughs> okay. Well, we will have it in the notes. Um, so I thank you. This has been great. And as somebody who has been able to follow you along on the journey, I'm just so glad we have this opportunity for you to share what it was like for you because it's been pretty fabulous watching you create this. Thanks, Suzanne. Thanks to everybody who's been listening or watching. If you're watching on YouTube, I hope you'll join me for my next guest and that will come out in two weeks and you can actually subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get the notice ahead of time. So thank you again, Karen. Thank you everybody for listening. You've been listening to the podcast for real life heroines with Susanna Liller. Thank you for joining us. If you would like to connect with Susanna outside of the show, please do. You can email Susanna at SusannaLillard.com and visit the website at SusannaLillard.com. Let's get social. Instagram at Susanna Liller, Facebook, Susanna Liller, author, speaker, and coach. Don't forget to subscribe to the show for easy access to our next episode. And a like and review would be very helpful. Until next time, remember to follow your inner guidance to grow and evolve.